So let's, we've gone through these four steps. Let's put this all together so that we kind of have a visual picture of what's going on. So we had this list of vulnerabilities, we had road factors, we had vehicle factors, and in the presence of these vulnerabilities, we have a trigger of some sort, an uncontrollable loss that we experience. And in some individuals, this causes an imbalance of the viewpoint between the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex. This causes the stress response to be chronically turned on. And when the stress response is turned on, you have a chronic elevation of these stress hormones, causes brain damage, which actually makes, reinforces and makes that imbalance of viewpoint even worse than it was before. So you can start off with, it, with an imbalance that looks like this. And as you go through this loop over and over again, that imbalance just gets worse and worse and worse. Now what happens when these brain areas start um, this imbalance act, then they're going to, there's going to be a depletion of certain brain chemicals, and it's that depletion of brain chemicals that causes the negative emotions that we feel, like sadness and anger, guilt, despair, and anxiety. Of course, when you're feeling these emotions, it's going to feed right back into that stress response, which, again, makes the loop go over and over and over again. Now, when I understood this loop that happens here, it made perfect sense to me why we have two major treatments for depression. The first major uh, treatment is antidepressant drugs. Most drugs are going to hit one of the major brain chemicals that is involved in depression. The brain chemicals that get depleted are serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. So if you hit those brain chemicals, that hits kind of the emotional crisis points of depression and tries to reverse that process. Now what antidepressant drugs are not necessarily going to be able to do is they're not going to directly hit the vulnerabilities that you experience. And they're also not going to directly hit the triggers. They're not going to prevent you from experiencing the triggers. So antidepressant drugs are going to help with the emotional manifestation of depression, but if you ever encounter the same trigger in the presence of the same vulnerability, you might actually go into another depressive episode. So there's another treatment that is uh, helpful here, which is psychotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, for example. So psychotherapy is meant to cause these brain areas to start Get, getting retrained so that they can communicate better with each other. And when you encounter the same stressor, you're not going to have the same imbalance and viewpoint occurring again. Along with um, treatment of depression, we can also talk about depression prevention. So there are a few different ways that we can do this. One would be to target the underlying cause or vulnerability. Depression is not always caused by uh, stress. Many times it is, but sometimes it's caused just by an illness that you have and a brain, or, yeah, a brain chemical imbalance that occurs as a result of that. So if you can t target the underlying cause or vulnerability, you have a good chance of preventing this loop from happening. You can also promote overall brain health. Anything that you can do that can support the functions of the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex is going to prevent that imbalance from occurring. The last thing that you can do, of course, is you can learn how to manage your stress. Because if you can directly target the trigger, you can also prevent this loop from happening. And if you don't mind, since stress is kind of my research area, this is what I'm going to focus on for the rest of the talk, stress management techniques.